Hey everyone, so today we're going to be going over unit 4 of chemistry, so this one will focus on chemical bonding. So yeah, let's just get right into the first question. So the first question says, the volume of one mole of hydrogen bromide at STP is 22.4 liters. The gram formula mass of hydrogen bromide is 80.9 grams per mole. What is the density of hydrogen bromide at STP? So this is kind of a weird question. Um, but what we need to do is use the density formula. So the density formula is just density equals uh, mass over volume. And so we can just plug our numbers in. So our mass they give us is 80.9 grams per mole. And we have one mole of hydrogen bromide. So that is 80.9 grams over the volume, which they give us as uh, 22.4 liters. So we just see the math there, um, and I have it under this, so we can see that it is 3.6-ish uh, grams per liter as the density. All right, let's move on to number two. Identify the type of bonding in solid potassium. So what is potassium? Potassium is a metal, right? So if it, there's bonding between two metals, that indicates that it's a metallic bond. All right, let's go on to number three. So it says, um, in 1864, the Solway process was developed to make soda ash. One step in the process is represented by the balanced equation below. Uh, in the space, draw a Lewis dot diagram for the reactant containing nitrogen in the equation. So if we look at our reactants, um, we can see that over here, the one that has nitrogen as uh, in its equation would be NH3 right here. And so if we were to draw a Lewis dot diagram, we'd have to find the number of total uh, valence electrons. So nitrogen has five, um, and then each of the hydrogens has one. So that's eight total. So if we draw this out, we have nitrogen and then our hydrogens on the outside. And we can see that the hydrogens are taken care of, but we have eight total electrons, um, and each of these represent two electrons. So two, four, six, and then we need two on the outside. And so it looks something like that. Now let's reveal this, and boom, yeah. I just drew it reverse, but it's the same thing. Write the chemical formula for one compound in the equation that contains both ionic bonds and covalent bonds. So let's look over here. Um, and we have one right here, let me switch colors. So this one right here, NaHCO3. So let's first identify the ionic compound. So we know Na, sodium, is a metal. So if we combine metal with whatever this is, I see a bunch of non-metals, that is gonna form a ionic compound. And then the covalent compounds is between each of these non-metals. So CO3 here has uh, covalent bonds. And so, that is one of the possible answer choices. Moving on to number five. Um, ozone O3 is produced from oxygen O2 by electrical discharge during thunderstorms. The unbalanced equation below represents the reaction that forms ozone. Explain in terms of electron configuration why a oxygen molecule, so this is a oxygen molecule, um, is more stable than just a oxygen atom. So oxygen atom, its electron configuration is 2, 6, so it's unstable. Um, and then for our oxygen molecule, that is where you have uh, something like this. So you have your two oxygens. It has 12 total valence electrons it needs to share. So it's like this. We add two bonds because the reason I know to add two bonds is because if I have 12, and I have one bond, right? That's 2, 10. So I can't share 10 equally um, in terms of pairs between these two, right? Because 10 divided by 2 is 5, and I can only have pairs of 2. So if I have 2 instead, so a double bond, I'd have 2 minus, uh, sorry, 10 minus 2 is 8. And now this works out because 8, oops, 8 divided by 2 between each of these atoms is 4. And so four is an even number I can express in these uh, electrons. So I can just add two on each side. 
boom. And that gives me a total of four pairs. And so we can see here that because this is stable, right, the, uh, they're sharing electrons in the middle, and therefore they're able to reach stability versus just the oxygen atom, which is 2,6, which is unstable. All right, number six, identify the type of bonding between the atoms in an oxygen molecule. Well, you can see right here, actually, it works out. This thing, covalent bonds, um, so it is covalent bonding. Boom. And it's also nonpolar because it's the same atom. Uh, seven, draw a Lewis electron dot diagram for a molecule of chlorine. So let's move over here. So we look at chlorine, right? We're going to do the same strategy we did before with these. We look at chlorine. How many total valence electrons? As seven each. So seven plus seven is 14. Let's add our single bond, right? Does that work out? So then I would have 12. Um, so if I do this, then I would have 12. 12 divided by 2, because there's two atoms right here, gives me 6. Can 6 be expressed by my valence electrons? Yes, it can. And so I can just add these on the outside. And that should give me 14 total. And therefore, was a question, just draw the diagram. And that should be the diagram right there. So, boom, and there it is. All right, question eight. So explain in terms of molecular polarity why hydrogen chloride is more soluble than hydrogen and water under the same conditions of temperature and pressure. All right, so first let's take a look at hydrogen chloride. So what exactly is hydrogen chloride written out as a chemical formula? So you have hydrogen and then chloride. So I just want to make sure this is balanced. So hydrogen is plus one and chlorine is minus one. So this is already balanced. All right. So first off, what type of molecule is it? Well, this is a polar molecule, right? Because their electronegativity differences um, indicate that and it's not the same uh, molecule either. So the distribution of their charges um, is not equal. So Knowing this, why is it more soluble than just hydrogen and water? Well, if we had hydrogen alone, that is not just polar, right? And we know that water, so H2O, is polar. So if these two are polar and like dissolves like, so polar things dissolve in polar things and nonpolar things dissolve in nonpolar things, that's why oil uh, doesn't you know mix with water very well then we know that because they're both polar and like dissolves like hydrogen chloride um, is more soluble in water number nine explain in terms of electronegativity difference why the bond in hcl is more polar than the bond in hi so for this take out your reference table and look up their electronegativity so hydrogen's electronegativity is 2.2 um, and the chlorine's electronegativity is 3.2. So that's a difference of one. Um, so let's keep that in mind. So now we want to look at iodine's electronegativity. Uh, iodine's electronegativity is 2.7. So 2.7 minus 2.2 is 0 0.5. So we know that uh, HCl has a greater electronegativity difference. Now, what does this mean when we're talking about polarity? Well, the greater the electronegativity difference, the more polar it is, because um, essentially what po po polarity of a molecule uh, determines within the bond is that uh, the sharing of that charge, right, the sharing of the electrons is going to be more unequal for more polar molecules versus a nonpolar one. So there we have it. The greater difference means it's more polar. Number 10, the density of hydrogen at STP is 0 0.0899 gram, grams per liter. Express this density to two significant figures. All right, so if we look at this sig figs, right, we're going to start with a decimal. So there's a decimal, so we're going to start on the left side. So if it's 0, 0, right, so right now, number of sig, fig, sig figs is 0. Uh, but now we have our first term, 8. But we see this is 899. So we can actually round this to just 9. So how many sig figs is this? 
Well, we just move from the left to the right until we reach the first term. So this is one sig fig. So we need another term here. And since we're rounding it, we can just call it a zero. Oops. And once we reach the first non-zero number, everything after that counts as a sig fig. So this is two sig figs. And so our answer is 0 0.090 grams per liter as the density to two sig figs. All right, number 11, state evidence that indicates NH3 has stronger intermolecular forces than CF4. So if it has stronger intermolecular forces, right? So intermolecular forces, if this is super high, that means it's harder to break apart the bonds and stuff. And so its boiling point should be very high. And its melting point should be very high as well. So we can just look over here. It's the evidence that NH3 has stronger intermolecular forces than CF4. So let's just look at their boiling points and melting points. Is NH3's boiling point higher? Um, negative 33.3 .3 is indeed higher than negative 427.8. And is the melting point higher? Negative 77.7 .7 is indeed greater than 183.6. Um, and boom, smiley face. Number 12, explain in terms of molecular structure or distribution of charge. So we have an option here. Why a molecule of methane, which is this, NH4, is nonpolar? Well, if we were to draw this... Um, out it look like this and we can just talk about the distribution of charge right it's a symmetrical distribution of charge symmetrical molecule here and therefore it is nonpolar equal distribution of charge number 13 draw the electron uh, dot diagram structure of calcium chloride so calcium chloride let's write this out calcium and then chloride and then once you write this out, you want to make sure it's balanced. So calcium's charge is plus two. Chlorine's charge is minus one. And so if this is plus one, I mean, sorry, plus two, and this is minus one, we'll need two chlorines to balance it out. So now we just need to draw the electron dot structure for this. And something to note here is calcium is a metal and chlorine is a nonmetal. So metal plus nonmetal, ionic bonding. So how you would draw this is like this. So first we want to express the metal. It's a bad bracket. So express the metal, calcium, and then you're just gonna draw the brackets and then the plus two on the outside to show that it lost two electrons and transfer those two electrons to chlorine. So how I like to do is just draw each of the chlorine atoms. Cause so let's just draw the first one. And then the one that gains electrons. So in our case, the two chlorine atoms, you will draw in each of those balanced electrons. And then outside the brackets, we can just write minus one to show it gained one. And then do the same thing for this one. Um, there are a couple of ways you can do it as well. You can put like a two on the outside of the first chlorine atom to show that um, there's two of those, but that looks two. Uh, let's see. Oh, boom. Um, everyone, they're drawing electrons when they gain. That was what I was talking about when you would draw in the electrons, the full shell. Um, for the atom that gains those electrons. So yeah, that does it for the unit review of uh, unit four, chemical bonding for chemistry. If you guys learned something, make sure you subscribe and thank you for watching.